So everyday health, almost everywhere you look, people are talking disease. Let's focus on the importance of health instead. There are some very basic truths in what creates a healthy body and mind, and this is what this class is all about. Hi, I'm Mary Bourne. I'm a traditional naturopath. I love sharing uh, natural remedies and helping people with natural means. And I look forward to sharing this message with you. And hopefully that you will share it with other people because it's a really important message now. People are stressed out, they're fearful, they, um, this is not good for your health. And so um, sharing messages of health is going to be a, a really important thing. Let's change up what we've been focusing on for the last year and so. So high level of wellness, health is more than being symptom free. It is a vibrant state of well-being with energy, positive emotions, and good feelings. If you start adopting healthy habits, you can both get rid of ailments and develop this high level of wellness. And it comes through habits. I bet you, you have changed a lot of the habits that you used to have before this response of COVID. You know, most people ignore these early warning signs. Um, they tend to take it for granted that you're gonna have aches and pains, headaches, uh, uh, fogginess, you're gonna have uh, indigestion, uh, fatigue. Uh, these things may be common, but they certainly are not normal. And the more that we take count of what is going on with our body, the better you will be able to determine what's creating these low level inflammatory processes or uh, small grade infections. So our lives are made up of habits. Uh, the way we behave has a lot to do with how we are living our life, whether it's happy experience, whether we're enjoying what we're doing. And sometimes our habits are picked up from other things. They are not habits that we've actually incorporated or consciously made an effort to create. So uh, the way you think about your body and your health is going to determine whether or not you're healthy. Your diet, we, all, we know that how we eat impacts our health. If we eat too much, we're going to gain weight. If we don't exercise, we're going to gain weight. And this weight is not healthy weight. So the other habits that we create are sleep, water. There are many things that can affect our ability to be healthy. So habits can work for you or they can work against you. And the first thing you have to do is to recognize what your habits are. What do you do on a daily or a weekly basis? And are these actually contributing to your health or are they just plain not healthy, but you've gotten into this routine? And those are the ones that you want to look at and see, how can I change these? How can I correct these bad habits that somehow have crept in and stolen away my happiness? Because you know what? When you don't feel good, it's very difficult to be happy. So uh, you didn't consciously create these habits. You know, two years ago, you wouldn't have thought of having to put a mask on to go grocery shopping. You know, masks were for burglars. 
So you, you have had to create some habits um, and change up some of the things that made you, you. If you were a hugger, it's been difficult. I'm a hugger and it's been really hard because I enjoy sharing my smiles. I enjoy sharing hugs with people. And in the last year, we've not been able to do that. And hand bumping is not the same as handshaking. In handshaking, you're exchanging your energy. Hand bumping, there's no energy exchange. And the best exchange of energy is through hugging. And it's known to be very healing. So if you're doing things that are not supporting health, then you need to look at how you can change those habits. Um, sometimes your habits are from family, from traditions, from different things. And a lot of times these different holidays we create, this is the habit that we've done. This is the way we've always done it. And it may not be the healthiest, but those aren't the daily things. The things that you want to look at is how is your day running? So if you're consciously creating positive habits and if you're choosing the food you eat, the people you associate with, the different things that create a better life, a healthier life, a happier life for you, you are undoubtedly going to be a happier person. So health and sanity, my goodness, people often want better health, but don't want to change anything They, you know, they want to keep living their lifestyle the way they are and complain about being unhealthy. So as the saying attributed Albert Einstein suggests, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. It isn't going to happen. So there are some basic things that we can do to help improve health. And the first thing we may need to be aware of is that health oftentimes is simply a choice. You know, you can either choose that chocolate brownie or you can choose an apple. And they only appear difficult because of the momentum of the habit force. And in the beginning, it, it's like creating that momentum and moving that energy. So creating a new habit requires a period of conscious effort in order to shift the momentum. And just like driving a car, when you first started driving a car, there were so many things to remember, uh, you know, which foot, uh, uh, what pedal, uh, turn signals, all of these things uh, may have been confusing. And if you did a shift car, it was even more confusing. So are you choosing health or are you choosing disease? If you are watching the news, listening to mainstream media, are reading every day about the testing, seeing people masked up and reminded that we live in a sick environment, how can you possibly focus on health? So uh, as much as you can avoid those situations, stop watching things that throw this in your face at every moment, create a new habit and focus on health. Watch. YouTube videos that focus on things that you enjoy. What kind of hobby do you like? There are tons of videos out there that you can uh, watch that will inspire you. I know I've been on a homesteading kick and uh, prepping and I interject that in a lot of my videos. And I think that raising the level of hope and in it, inspiring people to do things that make them happy is a lot more effective 
than keeping people in fear at every moment that something horrible is going to come about and uh, you know we're all going to die. We've been living with that stupid myth for about a year and a half now, and it it is not come to pass. Yes, a lot of people die. Everybody dies eventually. That's the ultimate goal. So don't worry about whether you're going to die of something. That very worry actually starts the mechanism of illness. So you want to think about how healthy a person you are. Be telling yourself that all the time. So change what you are paying attention to and start creating better habits. Now it takes about two to four weeks for a new habit to, to uh, change, but that you can work on one thing at a time if it's a big thing, or you can work on little things here and there, just switch things up, maybe change your morning routine, change your afternoon routine by one little thing. And it might be the simple thing of adding a glass of water as soon as you get up in the morning. It can be very, very small, but every time you add something new to what you're doing, you're on the path to a healthier being. The new behavior will cause, uh, will cease to require effort as, as you go along and you'll feel better. And every time you feel better, it inspires you to keep on and um, <clears throat> you can work on different levels. You can work on emotionally what's going on. You can work on something physical. You can work on um maybe being more joyful, those type of things. So there's a lot of ways that you can uh, be healthier. It isn't just about diet. And one of the books that I love that helped me a lot was called First Things First. And in that book, Stephen Covey puts, um, he enumerates seven different areas in our life that we can pay uh, attention to, and we can either do it in a negative way or we can do it in a positive way. So uh, it's an older book. Uh, you probably can find it in a library somewhere, but find something that helps you be inspired. Uh, sometimes you have to take things uh, a little bit at a time. And there are books that talk about doing small things to create a uh, create accomplishment. So watch some videos that focus on health. Like uh, I have over 50 different videos on different health subjects that you could uh, spend 20 minutes every day just getting inspired about an herb, uh, telling somebody about it, sharing that information. There are herbs are videos on gardening, there's videos on exercising, breathing, uh, even laughing is very important because it moves the diaphragm. So instead of spending the time that you normally would spend on watching negative programs like um, CNN, <laughs> then watch something that makes you feel good. Be aware of what your programming is, um, impact, how it's impacting you. And sometimes you just, you know, want to get up and dance, you know, it's important for you to move your body. And uh, as Stephen Covey says, keeping the main thing, the main thing, that's really <laughs> what you're trying to accomplish. So create a list of what you want. You know, do you want a healthier lifestyle? How does that look to you? Uh, I'm sure none of it will be fear and poor health, etc. It is going to be more positive. This is um, called a daily momentum sheet. I created it. You can create your own. But basically, uh, every day I print off a new sheet, or actually a sheet. I print off 
a week's worth of sheets because, you know, you got to save time. But every day I fill it out and put the date in and I put my goals. And I have two goals and I, I put one up here and one down here, um, what my classes are. You, you can change this up. Uh, every day I want to concentrate on prayer, Bible. I have ferments that, uh, so sometimes I do sourdough, sometimes I'm fermenting, sometimes I'm making apple cider vinegar. Now, I'm not going to do these on a, every day, all the time, but they're there to remind me that I could. So this supplements I take every day. Exercise, not so much. Breathing is an important thing to concentrate every day. Self-care is simply getting up, water, you know, taking a shower, uh, doing your hair. Sometimes you're so depressed that checking that self-care off is an accomplishment. Now, then I have, uh, you know, contacts that I have to make. Uh, so uh, I put in some check boxes and my goal is to have three contacts every single day. Then I list some of the things that I want to accomplish that day, what I want to accomplish this week, um, what my monthly focus on, uh, cleaning and clutter. So every day I want to spend at least 15 minutes, sometimes 45 if I have a bigger task on cleaning up clutter. Uh, I love uh, homesteading and gardening. And if I watch videos that pertain to that, I will check off. If I watch too many videos, then I, you know, kind of do a little self-talk and say, okay, you have done a little bit too much of the videos. You need more action. And so I need to work on different things. Uh, gardening is a big thing. And of course, during midwinter, the gardening may look like something like sprouting or, you know, it's not going to be the same every day, all year, 365. Then um, I might be thinking of things that I want to do, but I know I don't have time today. So those will go in Thoughts for Tomorrow uh, and they don't clutter up or stay on my mind for the daily momentum. I only want to put in here what I'm going to accomplish. If the day gets jarred and everybody has days that don't go according to plan, then uh, if I write something down in my daily momentum that doesn't get accomplished, I'll put a little arrow next to it and then move it over to thoughts for tomorrow. Uh, don't make 10 item, 15 items on your daily momentum and get bummed because you haven't accomplished them. Be conscious of exactly how much time you have and realize that there are things that you have to do on a daily basis that take up time. And that's why I like to enumerate some of these things like taking supplements, uh, writing and journaling, exercise, make that what's important for you. And um, if you would like a copy of this, just email me, drmary at bornforhealth.com and I'll send you out a copy and then you can kind of change it up this does not look like the original I got. Um, that was uh, thanks to uh, Robert Gruler, who is a criminal uh, a, a attorney. And he created this because he wanted to make sure that he was living an intentional life, that it wasn't just drifting. And he found that this particular device helped him stay focused and on what was important. And every day, be grateful. Have something in there. Your day will go by and all of a sudden evening will come by and I'll, I'll say, oh, I don't have anything in my gratitude box. I will intentionally 
think about maybe it was just a beautiful day. Maybe I heard from a friend. Maybe it was something I could do for somebody else. And I was grateful for being able to do that. Um, consider the goals that you want. So if you're up here and you have achieved some of these goals and you want to move your marker a little bit, go down here and make sure that you recognize. And, you know, most of the time we don't get recognition. We have to do self-recognition and uh, it, it doesn't take anything away from it. So uh, make sure that if you want something in your life that that isn't it isn't quantitative then you can put down here what it might look like until you have it clear in your mind and you can move it up to here so find a way to track your momentum it can be on a phone it can be on your computer there are plenty of different apps out there if you're the type of person that likes to do things on a phone i personally love the checking off of things it's a physical um gratification that i get for for uh checking off different items and uh, it uh, it gives me more momentum. So hopefully that helps. If, if you, like I said, if you want a copy of that, I'd be happy to share that with you. So once a new habit has been established, you simply pick another one and work on it for a few weeks or until you feel like you've got a handle on it, then think about what's the next one you want to move to. So positive changes require many small efforts, but these small changes yield big results. Even if it's just eating an apple a day or changing up that you, instead of chips, you eat carrot sticks or celery sticks. Do something that is correcting a habit and that tastes good at the same time. So if you keep track, you can have small achievement parties. You know, it's like, yay, I did it. So the best doctors anywhere, uh, nobody can deny it, are doctors. Sunshine, water, air, rest, exercise, and diet. So these six will gladly you attend if only you are willing. The mind, they'll clear your ills, they'll mend. So um, this was from Health Poetry Prescription by Ernest Endeavor. And he's uh, he writes comically, so it's a great thing. So let's talk about habit number one, program your mind for health. Because if your mind isn't on board, the rest of you is not going to follow. You have to be committed to living a healthier lifestyle. And a lot of people simply don't know what they're doing wrong. And I'm not saying I'm going to point out everything. But if you are mindful of what you're doing and how you're responding to what you're doing, how you're feeling about what you're doing, that's going to be the drive that helps you change what you're doing. So health starts in the mind. You can't be healthy if you keep telling yourself you're sick or getting a psychological payoff for being sick. You know, some people get pity parties and um, they associate that with love, but pity does not count for love. People don't want to be around sick people. That's this, a true fact. People want to be around healthy people that are vibrant and full of life and joy. So uh, don't believe you deserve, if you don't believe you deserve to be healthy, you're not going to be healthy. You need to know that, and, and I'm saying this as a heartfelt person, that as a child of God, you deserve health. God doesn't want you to be sick. So believe your, uh, if you believe your health problems are incurable, they're going to be. If there's no hope, you have to change that. Find hope. 
find somebody who believes that you have everything in your body that can help you heal whatever it is that you're dealing with. I have many books that I count on that help me. And so if you have something specific and you want to email me regarding this, not that I have the cure-all, but I might be able to send you some research papers and show you a different way of looking at something. Uh, you know, there's uh, the truth about cancer. There is a lot of bad information out there and it's perpetrated by the pharmaceutical industry to keep you in fear and fear is the best way to get sick so make a checkup from the neck up and examine your thoughts and let's make sure that you're on on track to be healthy so some of the affirmations of illness are, uh, I don't feel well, I'm getting old, I'm always tired, or I don't have enough energy, I'm just not healthy as I used to be, or I'm getting old. This one, that second one, you know, people can fall into that trap. I've heard 20 year olds say that. That is ridiculous. People, Getting old is obvious. We're not getting younger, but that doesn't mean you have to be, I'm getting sick because I'm getting old. You can be getting healthier as you get older because you're smarter and you're doing things better. You're doing things different. Now you may be doing things slower, but that doesn't mean you're not doing anything. That just means that your body isn't as fast as it used to be. You know what? Two-year-olds are a lot faster than 20-year-olds. It's just a fact. That doesn't mean you're sicker. It just means it's different. So these kind of thoughts, the including the I am part of it, is that you're bringing, that's part of your being. You can feel tired, obviously. You can feel old, but you, when you include I'm getting, that becomes part of you. So recognizing how you're feeling is different than having it be part of you. So it's not that you're, you're feeling old all the time, Sometimes you feel pretty good. So don't bring that into your being. What you want to bring into your being are affirmations of health. So I am a healthy person. This is not like me. I'm a healthy person. My body is strong and healthy. I happen to be a little tired today, but I'm a healthy person. And if you can make the statement, I'm in perfect health, that's fine. It's what you tell your body that your mind starts to create that type of body. So it all starts in the brain, in the mind, and uh, catch yourself. And maybe that's the first thing you have to work on is creating better mind talk, self-talk, that you're uh, going to write something down saying, this is a statement, how can I make this a little more healthy? How can I make that statement different so that it works toward my health? So habit two is to walk or otherwise be physically active for 30 minutes a day. Now, it can be hard gardening, shoveling. It can be raking. It can be um, walking fast and then slow and then fast and then slow. Try to get yourself uh, either sweating or out of breath or that you are actually pumping the blood so you're 
maybe when you're down, your face will be red because blood will come to the brain and that's that's a good thing. Um, dancing is a wonderful thing. I love, I chi was good. All of these things that as, uh, yoga is good because it concentrates on breathing, but yoga basically is not um, circulation movement. It's more about breathing, which helps in some way, but it's not exactly moving the muscles like uh, uh, running would do. So uh, you wanted the point of exercise is that it should improve your circulation and that it tones the muscles. And we know that if you don't use it, you lose it. So um, the other thing is, is in the breathing, you're actually strengthening your immune system. And we want to keep our immune system working efficiently because that is one of the ways we stay healthy. So adding sunshine is really uh, an important thing. Fresh air, you know, don't wear the mask outside breathe in that fresh air, make sure you're getting lots of oxygen because that's the breath of life is oxygen. We need oxygen. So uh, exercise helps to lose weight. It clears your mind, it elevates your mood. And remember to breathe deep. I like to add some essential oils to this and help you to, um, it helps me to be more invigorated. You can even, uh, you know, housework vacuuming can be an exercise. Uh, adding a lemon to your uh, non-scented soap to clean things with and breathe in that beautiful scent of lemon can be very invigorating. So, just about everyone knows that exercise is good for them, but many people don't do it because they don't enjoy it. So find something you enjoy and do it. So uh, walking or something pleasant, dancing. So uh, the thing is, is you want to tax yourself for a certain amount of time, swimming, biking, um, there's a thing that's called lymphasizing. It's a small mini trampoline that you don't actually, your feet don't actually leave the trampoline. You're, you're actually just moving the lymphatic system. And that because the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump like the blood does, you need to, to move the muscles and breathe. And that's what moves the lymph. So whatever you do, make your exercise time pleasant and fun and find a way to chart it so that you know that you're being progressive about it, that maybe you can only do five minutes. Uh, we have a considerable hill. And if I move from up that hill, I can, in the early spring, I can only get to the top of the hill and I got to stop and take a breath in that. And by the two weeks I can move up and further and then sometimes I can move all the way to the road. So chart what you're doing and make sure that you're uh, being progressive about it. So so here's a word a word from our sponsor I should say. So supplements for exercise uh, recovery. So you know, you know Sometimes um, you need electrolytes, especially if you've been sweating in that. And I love the Solstic Energy. It's a great uh, replacement. I don't like Gatorade. I think that the coloring in it, the sugars in it are very bad for you. I don't think children should be doing Gatorade. Uh, you know, this blue stuff that turns their tongue blue. No, though that's bad, um, bad for them, and uh, it shouldn't be encouraged. So, uh, nitric oxide boosting. Now, it's important for uh, nitric oxide 
to, uh, it, it helps with the oxygen in the blood. So there's a beet juice uh, drink that I, my husband and I both love. It's called Rejuvenate. And that is um, helpful. You can find some other beet juice drinks on the market that uh, test to see whether or not they work for you. And safflower tea. If you have muscle cramps, safflower is wonderful. I did a whole video on safflower uh, if you look on my YouTube channel. But these, you just pop open the two capsules, put them in uh, some tea. You can make the tea hot. You can add a, to um, a flavored tea like uh, lemon and ginger. It uh, is beneficial because what safflower does, it goes in and um, calms the lactic acid that builds up in the muscles um, when you use uh, the muscles. So a lot of people will have these really tight cramps and having safflower tea um, on your cupboard is a marvelous thing because within a few minutes, it can be calming that muscle spasm down. I can remember my dad used to have Charlie horses in the middle of the night and he'd get up and scream and holler and it's like wake the whole house up and um, if I had known about safflower at that time it would have been such a relief not only for him but for the entire family so habit number three is getting adequate sleep so I have a video just all about sleep and how you can achieve better sleep. And I've linked it here and I will link it in the description below as well, because that is really, really important to get a good solid sleep. Your body depends on sleep for healing. So it strengthens your immune system, reduces your stress, improves your mood. You know, you can be pretty cranky if you haven't had enough sleep. It lowers your risks of accidents because you're not fully aware. Uh, it helps your body detoxify. Your brain actually shrinks a bit in uh, during sleep so that it can wash. Uh, your lymphatic system goes in there and it kind of gets rid of all the toxins in the brain area, but it only happens if you're asleep for a certain amount of time. It, re it reduces your risk of obesity, heart disease, and depression. There have been studies that show the benefits of sleep. It helps your body heal from injuries and disease. Your natural instinct is when you're sick to sleep. So um, your body knows that it needs to do that. Oftentimes it's your mind that is interrupting the ability for the body to, to fall asleep and stay asleep. So it helps you perform better at work. This is a well-known sleep study that was done. And another word from our sponsor, if you take melatonin, it uh, can help you sleep uh, it also helps your body when you're going through these different changes. Uh, people who do shift changing, they uh, sleep during the day, they work during the night. Uh, pilots, uh, people that are on a different kind of schedule or they're going to another part of the country or in another country and they have to keep adjusting to these time zones then melatonin really does help you get back into the time zone where you are. And uh, if you wear a sleep mask uh, or can, can keep your room totally dark without electronics, uh, get yourself a wind up clock, whatever, if you find that uh, your sleep is disturbed, sometimes it's because you have a TV going or your computer's on and those uh, interferences, these electronic interferences can actually stop the rhythm of your brain and um, it doesn't get the sleep it needs. Now, there are some things that if you've been stressed out and you fall asleep, but you wake up, then there's some 
sleep formulas. Uh, herbal sleep is an all herbal formula that has like valerian and uh, different herbs in it that help calm the mind. Nervous fatigue formula is a Chinese developed formula that helps and you take two twice a day or if you do the concentrate, you can do one. And it really does help your um, stress levels not affect you as much as uh, if you don't have the right nutrition. Some people do well with magnesium. Uh, there's a brain magnesium called MindMax that is uh, wonderful for uh, calming the brain. It's got L-threonate in it. And uh, that's another good magnesium. Some people just like regular magnesium. You should try out what best uh, for you, um, vitamin C and Nutricom for handling stress. Nutricom is a high B vitamin C formula and it has herbs in it like valerian and passion flower and different things that that are intended to calm the mind so that your sleep is not interfered with. So habit number four is drink more water. And we know the importance of water uh, and, and good water, not just chlorinated tap water, but water that's been purified because our body needs to cleanse. Um, the water is the next to oxygen, the number one important ingredient that we can give our body to maintain good health. So every organ and tissue of the body needs water, both to utilize nutrients and to flush irritants. So adequate intake of water can relieve pain, including headaches and joint pain. Oftentimes when you're dehydrated, it's because you're, um, you get headache because you're dehydrated. So it can improve your mood and aids in digestion. <clears throat> when you have the digestive process, you need water to create hydrochloric acid. So hydrochloric acid, in the stomach helps you break down proteins and uh, calcium. And water is one of the ways that uh, your body makes this very important digestive. <clears throat> Reduce uh, allergic reactions. You know, a lot of people don't realize they have this dripping nose and their eyes and they're losing a lot of water and they don't replace it. So uh, make sure that you're drinking adequate amounts of water. Now, what we say is take your body weight, divide it in half, and that's how many ounces of water you should drink on a daily basis. So if you're not doing that, that can be up in your goal section. This is the amount of water you want to be able to take in every day. Make water one of your goal priorities, and it's really not a difficult thing. Sometimes you have to switch out, maybe you're drinking other things and you should be drinking water. So every cup of coffee you drink or tea, regular tea, it you need an extra half a cup of water to compensate for that. So you're, these things are dehydrating you. And so therefore you need to drink more water because you're drinking coffee and tea. Now, herbal teas are different. Herbal teas can add to your amount of water. So if you wanna do chamomile tea, then you can count that as water. So water aids in weight loss. We know that uh, it, it helps to flush out toxins and it aids in memory and circulation. And it really will increase your energy if you drink it properly. So water therapy, drink a glass of water first thing in the morning before breakfast. Drink another glass of water about 15, 20 minutes prior to lunch and dinner. Drink a glass about one hour before bedtime. And that right there will contribute to a 
quite a few ounces of water. Um, so when you're drinking a glass of water, I'm not talking four ounces. And it's really better not to gulp it, but to sip on it. And if you don't like the taste of water, you can add a pinch of salt, but another sponsor here. Uh, Sunshine has these wonderful little packets that uh, can help improve your circulation or your immune system or revive you if you're feeling droopy. So like if you have that mid-morning crash or mid-afternoon crash, then doing a soul stick revive can help you. And um, the if you don't like taking vitamins, the soul stick 24 is another way that can help you get the vitamins and minerals in your body that you need. So habit number five is eat fruits and vegetables every day. So we need to find ways that we can adopt a diet that is healthy for us. Some of the diets that we've taken in, uh, we've grown up with, and maybe they were good habits and maybe they were bad habits. But what we want to do is eat many vegetables. Now, some of the health experts tell us between six and eight servings. So what's a serving? A serving is a half a cup. Now, that's not a whole lot. If you eat a whole apple, you've already accomplished two servings, depending on the size of the apple. That's a medium apple. If you eat a large apple, that's three servings right there. And everybody knows that uh, apple a day keeps the doctor away. So it's much, you know, if you're doing it on the occasional basis and you're cheating and you're not, you know, give yourself permission to enjoy it, chew it, enjoy the taste of it. Don't guilt up on it. It's one day. So most nutritional experts believe that you need to have, I, I've always heard six to eight, uh, some people say five to seven, but these are one half cup servings. And so this isn't really difficult at all. So um, eat some carrots or celery sticks or a salad at the start of lunch. So always eat your veggies first, try to get the bulk of your vegetables in before you eat like the starchy potatoes or uh, rice, get those veggies in first. So put a couple of vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, green beans, zucchini or squash. Eat a plethora of color if you can. Try to find foods that are colorful because the beta carotenes in the different colors help your body in a variety of ways. And I have a class on antioxidants if you're interested in learning more about that. So the benefits of this plan is when you eat the fruits and vegetables first, you have less room for the other things. Uh, you train your body to like and crave natural foods. If you're eating a lot of dressing on your salad, try to back off a little bit, a little bit so that you're tasting the salad. Get in touch with, uh, maybe take some of the salad without the dressing on it first and give yourself the chance to taste what the salad, the lettuce, the ch Swiss chard, the kale tastes like before it's loaded with uh, salad dressing. I use so little dressing. It's just there uh, to keep the 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 uh, food together easier. Sometimes I'll just sprinkle lemon juice on it. It. Um, I love the taste of salad. So you you train your body to crave the taste of real food. Your gut flora is altered for the better when you eat veggies. When you eat fruits and veggies, you're creating food for the probiotics and these are called prebiotics. So you will get a healthier gut if you eat 
the prebiotics and you, you will come to enjoy it. So habit six is eat less. You know, some people, it's all about portion. And I heard years ago that you eat according to your hand. Uh, the palm of the hand should be the amount of protein uh, based on the thickness and the width of the palm. The whole hand should be your vegetables. You want to make sure that you have a great amount of vegetables. It can be as high as you want, but at least as big as your hand. And then when you bring your hand like this and you create a little well, that's how much oil you should be taking in and preferably healthy oils. So lengthening your life in laboratory experiments, scientists have found that reducing caloric intake is the best and only consistently effective way to improve uh, general health and longevity of laboratory animals. Eating less helps us maintain weight, reduces free radical damage, and slows aging. And one of the ways you can do this is just to slow down while you're eating. Put your fork down or your spoon down in between your meal, your bites. Enjoy that food. A lot of people will eat mindlessly. You're just getting it in and you're not chewing it adequately enough to break it down so that, you know, your stomach doesn't have any teeth. You need to make sure that you're chewing it properly. So um, enjoy that flavor and texture of the food and stop eating when you don't feel hungry anymore. This is a really good tool. My husband has done this for years and years, and he um, has been able to maintain a healthy weight just by being mindful of, does this bite taste as good as the bite previously? And when you're mindful about your eating, you won't overeat. So all of these things have to do with making better choices. Now, the one thing that we need because we simply don't eat all the things that we should eat to maintain health. I really feel that people need to take some supplements on a daily basis. And if you want to maintain health, those people that take supplements are definitely healthier. Yes, some people can be very dedicated about their diet but the average person isn't. So choose some way to get a multivitamin and mineral. Minerals are really, really important because they're not in the soil and, uh, anymore. And we have to add them to it. You know, I'm an avid gardener and every spring you have to amend the soil. Yeah, other, because food takes up those nutrients and you want the nutrients available in the soil so that the veggies uptake that good nutrition. It makes them taste better and look better and uh, better for us. So amend yourself on a daily basis by taking uh, some kind of supplements. Now, uh, some people, uh, a vitamin and mineral supplement for some children, uh, gummies are uh, healthy uh, alternative, but not Flintstones. You know, there's colors in it, there's sugars in it. Look what's in your supplement. And if you want some help in that area, uh, if you're not one that can chew or swallow great big things, then, you know, if you've got braces, that Soul Stick 24 is a great vitamin and mineral supplement. There's liquid forms of minerals that are very good for you. But in these times of stress, if you're not taking B vitamins, and I'm not just saying B12, I mean a plethora of B vitamins, Every single one of the bees have value and are important for your nervous system. So you need to be taking that on a regular basis and the same thing with vitamin C, vitamin D. There's some things that are just really, really important in keeping good health. We've been told for 30 
40 years, stay out of the sun, put sunscreen on and all this. And so we have become beings of very, very deficient D. And we need that. There's a, over 400 processes that vitamin D is needed for. And I'm particularly talking about D3. They add D2 to milk and it's really very difficult for your body to break that down. So you need it in the form of D3 and um, magnesium is another mineral that's been lost. Uh, men uh, ejaculate zinc uh, and so they need to replace their zinc on a constant uh, regular basis. And zinc is one of the things that we have heard that really stops viral replication. And so taking zinc when you feel a cold coming on or you feel the flu uh, can just stop that in its tracks. Many women need iron, especially during menses. You lose a lot of iron uh, during blood loss. And so uh, molasses is a good way of adding that dandelion. Dandelion tea is really a health benefit. And there's other sources. A lot of uh, iron will constipate you. So be aware of some of the options out there that uh, won't constipate you. So um, adding some of these to your diet is really, really important. There's something called trace minerals. These are things you get from your food. These are things that um, if you just depend on supplements, you're simply not going to get the trace minerals you need. You need to get those from your food. There's a colloidal mineral supplement that um, is very beneficial for you. It has acai in it to flavor it. So if you're in need of something like that to build healthy bones and teeth, uh, it's really, really good. Now, the other thing that we have found a need for in uh, recent years is bone broth. Now, there are ways to make your own bone broth. And of course, that's the most nutritious way. But for most people, collagen is a really good source of um, bone broth. What you're doing is uh, you're cooking the bones for hours and hours and hours, usually 24 to 36 hours. And what you're trying to do is extract the collagen out of the bones and that makes the broth congeal. So it sort of ends up looking like gelatin. Collagen is another way to get it. And those people that have been adding collagen to their diet have seen better skin uh, health, um, more elasticity, it helps in tissue repair, it is um, beneficial for the hair and the nails, uh, but more importantly, it's important for bone and joint health. So it can uh, help repair the gut. Um, and this is where you can get some trace minerals as well as electrolytes. So that's a really good form of collagen. Now, omega-3 essential fatty acids, unfortunately, we get a lot of omega-6 and omega-9 and not as much omega-3. And so adding some fish oil to your diet is really helpful. Uh, you can eat some salmon, but you know the importance of omega-3 for heart health uh, anti-inflammation, -infl uh, brain health. It's just not worth it. As you get older, uh, I really think taking an omega-3 essential fatty acid supplement, at least one um, of a thousand grams, uh, a thousand milligrams a day is um, going to help you. It helps also initiate the endocannabinoid system, which is the one system that balances all the other system. It is the connector to all of the other systems. So um, 
keep your bowels going. You know, bowel health and staying regular, if you're not eliminating your toxins, then you're holding it all in. So in the past, people understood the importance of staying regular. Unfortunately, many doctors, medical doctors today, if you, they don't talk about your constipation, they may want you in at a certain age to have a colonoscopy. But you know, if you have a regularly running colon, that's more important than, uh, to me than a colonoscopy. So you should have at least one, maybe two healthy bowel movements on a daily basis. Uh, it, they shouldn't be things that you have to push out. Uh, they should be comfortable. Uh, they should um, leave your body within five minutes. You shouldn't have to sit on the toilet for a long time. Um, you should get the urge go and be done with it. No lighting of the candles and, you know, all of these things, uh, you should go and be done and that's it. And there should be no strain. And one of the indications of a slow moving bowel is that you haven't taken in enough fiber. So the fiber helps to make the colon feel full, which gives you the indication it's time to eliminate. And if you've not drinking enough water, then that creates a dry stool and it makes it hard to pass. So another reason why you definitely need that water. Auto intoxication is a valid uh, concern. If waste stays in the body too long, it creates a problem and um, you hold on to these toxins, your body has to do something with them. Uh, irritants are absorbed into the body causing uh, inflammation and irritation, brain fog, reduced energy, congestion, increased risk of infection and negative mood. You know, when you were a child, uh, an infant and you didn't have an elimination, sometimes you'd mount a fever because the body has to burn those toxins out some way. And it, of course, is the better way to do it is to make sure that you're flushing out your toxins. Number one, uh, drinking enough water so that your urinary system is working efficiently. And number two, obviously number two, so that your colon is working really well. So get things moving. If your bowels aren't moving every day, start doing a colon cleanse program. In the spring is an excellent time to get those toxins out. Um, so another sponsor message here, Ultrabiome DTX is an excellent uh, fiber rich um, detoxification. The Tauhi cleanse doesn't have as much fiber in it, but it helps to concentrate on making the liver more efficient. In fact, Tauhi means liver in Chinese. So these can improve your mood, they help you lose weight, they uh, reduce pain and inflammation and enhance immune function. And of course, it's gonna improve your overall health. So keep things moving after you get um, your colon move better, you can keep your, your, your whole system working more efficiently. You may not have to do something on a regular basis. When I started uh, paying more attention to my health, it took me three months to get my colon regular. And then I didn't have to take something on a regular basis. My food helped me do that. But in the beginning, psyllium hulls combination was a, a fiber that I would put in uh, some drink and drink it down every morning and then follow it with a glass of water. And it really, really made things so much more efficient uh, as a child growing up. Um, these things weren't taught to me. I didn't know any better. And uh, by the time I was in my 20s, I was maybe having an elimination once every 10 days, you know, and that's not normal. I mean, that's, that's totally wrong. 
So I really had to get things moving to make me feel healthier. And I was not overweight. I was only 95 pounds and I still wasn't eliminating like I should. So sometimes you need to have an encourager that's a lower bowel stimulant uh, or more magnesium. So the right kind of magnesium will actually allow the bowel to relax so that you can have an elimination. And of course, it's really important for probiotics. We know the um, gut has a lot to do with brain health. It has a lot to do with uh, general health. Um, so, uh, and enzymes, you know, as we age, we need more enzymes to help our body utilize the nutrients we're giving it. You know, sometimes you can give it the best diet, but if you're not breaking down those foods, then the um, body is not getting what it needs. So digestive enzymes are really, really important. So make health a priority. We have many priorities competing for our time, but adopting healthy habits should be at the top of the list because honestly, you cannot be healthy and happy. If you're unhealthy, you can't be happy. So health matters. Health matters more than wealth because if you're wealthy and not healthy, you can't enjoy it. So a healthy body and mind give greater energy and mental clarity to everything that we are. The person we are exudes through health. So no matter how busy you are, you want to start today and make the effort to develop these simple daily habits so that you can be so much happier and healthier. So everyday health change your focus and subscribe to my channel for some positive tips. Um, email me at drmary at bornforhealth.com and make sure you chart your course for a healthier you. I hope you've enjoyed this, that this has been very beneficial for you and that you share it with other people and that you subscribe to my channel for more healthy information and hope for uh, your your better health. So this is Dr. Mary for the health of it. And I hope you enjoy your day.